Hello everybody, this is Hammer Striker here. Today's video is about choosing a holster for carry, and especially for the carry position you want to carry in, and there's a lot of choices. The holsters you see on the table here are made by Vetter holsters. So Vetter's helped, decided to help us do a video like this by providing the holsters that you see. And I'm going to kind of walk through each of the holsters, talk about the carry positions you'd use them in. And all of the holsters come in a really nice bag like this. Let me pick this bag up for just a second. It's really thick, robust with a drawstring so that it allows you to keep your holsters clean and avoid, especially if you stuff them into a drawer. You know, a lot of people have a drawer of holsters, keep them from getting all beat up. So this comes with it. And of course, the bag for this one's just bigger, but they really do have high quality holsters. So there's a number of ways people carry. You've got your classic strong side, just on the side of your body. And then you might move around to something like these for appendix or back and pocket carry. Now everything on the table here is inside the waistband. Most carry these days, in the United States at least, is concealed carry unless you're law enforcement. There are states that are moving in the direction of open carry. So they do carry an assortment outside the waistband. But I wanted to focus on inside the waistband because outside the waistband is a lot easier. When you're not trying to hide the thing, you aren't trying to tuck it in hard to your body, you, you've got more choices. But in the inside the waistband realm, there's a lot of ways to carry and there's some considerations in what holster would you choose to do that? What features does it need to have? And one thing I would think of on holsters is to use the largest, so I could move to this, use the largest holster that fits the spot you want to carry because you've got a couple pounds of metal strapped to your body by the time you load the thing up with ammo and the gun itself and distributing that force up against your body or across a larger area of your body is going to make it more comfortable. But that would not be a good appendix holster. So again, then you start looking at other options. And carry in the pocket is kind of important. People have a tendency to want to just chuck a gun in a pocket. It's a colossally bad idea. I do pocket carry. Most of the time when I'm carrying it's in a pocket, but I have it in a holster. And there's a few things that are important about that. One is it keeps things from getting into the business end of it that might be found in your pocket. And by the way, every one of these guns that I'm gonna show you today has been double safety checked. So both Hammer and I have both checked all these guns. So I'm not gonna bore you with checking every one every single time I touch it. But having it in a holster protects the sights in two ways. It protects the sights from being damaged, moved, or otherwise, and it also protects you from the sights. So the sights aren't chewing holes in your pants as they move around. It keeps your finger, your keys, and other nonsense away from the trigger. And that's kind of a note too. If you're going to pocket carry, the gun goes in the pocket, nothing else. Don't put your keys, pens, anything else, because if it did manage to get loose and you, something like that got into the trigger, you could end up with an unpleasant situation. The Vetter holsters that you see here is a Kydex. There's also pouch styles that other manufacturers make, but the Kydex has a few advantages. One, that it's going to hold the gun very upright. So the position that this gun's going to be in your pocket is going to be very, very predictable. It's going to be where you put it. It's going to be where you expect it when you go to reach for it. These are designed to catch and interfere with parts of your pocket. So when you go to pull the gun, the gun comes out and the holster stays behind because nothing would be worse than pulling the gun, coming up like this, and, oh, yeah, I can't really play. Of course, if that happens, you would just do that. But overall, having it stay put and stay in the pocket when you draw is a definite advantage. So here I am walking around, my shirt's tucked in, I'm wearing jeans. I'm obviously unarmed. There'd be no way that I can possibly be armed. Or am I? I've got a Glock 26 here, and this is their pocket holster. And I did remove the holster from my pocket because you never want to reholster a gun that you can't see. So you never try to reholster into a pocket even though this is Kydex and it stays open. Kind of an important note, you know, we've had people say that you can't pocket carry a Glock 26 or I actually do sometimes pocket carry a Glock 29. It comes down to your body style, how big your body is, but also what you wear. So these Ariat jeans have really deep pockets and I can actually put the gun back in and you can see that they're really deep pockets and they're a wide opening. So in some cases you, you, you choose your clothing based on what you're going to carry. Now if I were wearing dress pants I probably couldn't do a, a Glock 26. I might have to either go to a Glock 43 or you know one of the others a little car or go to one of the other carry positions that we're talking about. So from a, a pocket carry the holster that I was showing you is what they call the pocket locker and it's got a lot of nice features. One it's sealed all the way around 
So like I mentioned, nothing's getting into the muzzle, gonna bung up the barrel or cause any problems. This particular one is set up for a Glock 26. This is a Gen 5, but this holster will fit all the Gens. And that's kind of important, especially with Glocks. There's minor changes in some of the Gens that some holsters will only work with the uh, 3 and 4, or let's say just the 5. Look for a holster manufacturer whose holster will work with all the generations. This particular one will. This is actually kind of a really nice pocket holster. One note I'll make on these holsters is the prices on these are pretty reasonable. Most of them in the 65-ish dollar range. Uh, at some point, I will have a discount link for you. I don't have it at the moment, but I'll have a discount. I'll put it on our affiliates page. But at the moment, we, they're, they're in kind of transition, getting that type of thing set up, and we don't have that to show you. But pocket carry is actually quite popular. You're going to want smaller guns. Obviously, you're not going to be dropping a Desert Eagle in your pocket comfortably. The Glocks and things like that really work well for that and make the gun very easily accessible. So I'm going to set the pocket gun away and move on to the next discussion. And as you just saw throughout the video, I'll cut in different scenes of drawing from these different holsters from various different positions. So the next one I'm going to look at is also an all Kydex. And there's some advantages to all Kydex versus the leather, and there's some disadvantages to all Kydex. This particular one that's in my hand, light tuck, and as I mentioned, it's an all Kydex clamshell. It's .080 Kydex. It's a really heavy duty Kydex, but it's still real light. So if I take the gun out of it, the holster weighs virtually nothing. The heaviest thing on the holster is the clip. And one of the things you'll note about their holsters, a lot of holster manufacturers put all sorts of logos on the clip. And if the clip happens to be exposed, that logo may tip somebody off that it's for a gun rather than a tool or a cell phone holder or some other thing. They don't have any logos on their clips. Oddly enough, they don't have any logos anywhere on their holsters. I would have figured maybe they put the logos in a hidden area of the holster. But not having logos on the clip is nice in the event the clip becomes exposed. It's less likely to immediately tell somebody it's a holster so there's a gun. Because especially if you're carrying inside the, in the concealed carry positions, you're not wanting to tell people you have a gun. You're, you're wanting to keep that on the down low. So I'm going to put the gun back in it. What you tend to get and what you would want to look for in a Kydex holster is a few features. One, you're going to want to look for adjustable tension, adjustable retention, so that you can tighten and loosen it to make the stiffness of removing the gun up to you. These are adjustable. I showed you the screw on the back. You're going to want the availability of a claw. This one has the claw. Why, what's the purpose of the claw? Why would you care? Well, when you get into the next step down from the bigger ones, you're going to generally have a single clip. And that single clip only gives you one pressure point on your belt. So it's going to have a tendency to want to turn. So depending on where you're carrying it, the position you're carrying it in, the claw gives it another point to push, push up against the belt and keep the holster from turning. So the availability of the claw, and especially the removability of the claw, so you can take it off when you don't want it, is an important feature, and these have that. The other thing you're going to want is adjustable cant. Because for a holster like this to be useful, let's say you want to put it on the back, you're going to want to be able to get the angle just right so that the grip is still held or hidden, but that when you go to reach for it, it's you can actually turn your hand in such a way you can get it. Same thing with appendix. Appendix carry is difficult to do and get right because it's not a part of your body that is really suitable for guns in most cases. You fold and you bend and turn and there's things in the way. So being able to adjust the cant will help you get it into a position you like. If you get one that's kind of a cheaper holster that is non-adjustable, you're in the long run, you're, unless it happens to exactly match you, you're not going to be happy. So the other possible thing to look for is adjustable ride height, which you can on these. You pull the screws out and you can move this clip up and down. They also have a number of additional clips available, but all of their holsters have adjustable ride height and uh, adjustable cant. Now, generally, the only Kydex holster, holsters tend to have adjustable retention. There are some that, the, the leather ones that do, but that's definitely a Kydex thing. And those are features you want to have. Their holsters have those features. The other thing that is kind of a nice to have, there's two pages of colors for their holsters. I wanted some consistency for doing the video, so I ordered all black for the Kydex components. But they have red, pink, green, blue, brown, flat dark earth, all, all just a whole host of colors. That could come into play depending on the clothing you tend to wear. Let's say you wear a blue uniform all the time. 
the holster being blue might help it blend in a little bit more than a black one would. But it's kind of a nice to have. And again, with two pages of color choices, I doubt there's going to be a color that you would want that they wouldn't have that you can make a holster in. Another thing to look for in any kind of holster is the sight guides or channel for the sights that's going to very well clear the front sight. You can see this one very well clears the front sight. Nothing's worse than trying to draw and having the front sight drag and hang up. But you also want to have it where it kind of comes up around the sights. Just like I was mentioning on the pocket holster is to keep those sights covered and protected. And you want to make sure that it comes up, covers the back of the gun so that the, you have the smooth part of the holster up against your body. Those are various considerations on the holsters. There's lots of Kydex holsters on the market. What I see with the Vetter holsters is all in one holster, all of the various quality attributes that I want. So this is Kydex. I can use this in any position that I could possibly want. Side of the back, left hand, right hand, appendix, or you know your typical strong side or cross draw, which cross draw is typically either the appendix turned the other way or the other strong side, the opposite strong side or of your of your body and these will work well for that. So now I've got the light tuck tucked away with a Glock 19. It's a little more you can see that their shirt's not normal but it kind of blends and when I lift up it doesn't show but if business gets going I have ready access to a Glock 19. So this is using the light tuck in the appendix position which is a little bit better because of the the lightness in fact yeah there it is the light tuck now this can be holstered in place, but you want to pay real close attention while you're doing it. The other option, of course, is the classic shirts all the way out, hanging down. But if you want to be a little less showy, then you can use that tuck. And basically all I did is I tucked just the front of the shirt into the back of the clip so that it would hang out nicely. Of course, now it's all array because I pulled it all the way out. Now as I move to the next one, now what I'm moving to is similar in size, but we're starting to get a little bit bigger because they have a leather backing. So it's a Kydex upper shell on a leather backing. One of the things I failed to mention on all Kydex, the Kydex clam shells, is that there's very consistent tension because it's, it's a rigid material on both sides. So it's how tight you tighten the screw determines the retention. When you start to get into leather, you don't get as, as often adjustable tension. These don't have adjustable tension. And the tension will vary depending on whether or not your belt's been cinched around it or not. Because when you cinch your belt around it, the, the leather is softer and it can pinch up against the gun. So you, one of the things you want to make sure of is that it has enough retention that when it's out, but not excessive retention. They're almost a little bit looser when it's out. Because once you put your belt on and you tighten this thing up against your body and that leather presses in a little bit, then you've got a much more robust tension. All of the Kydex shell style, you can do one-handed reholstering because on a leather one, as long as you don't get the shorter version of this little sweat guard, you can set the gun up against the sweat guard and guide it into the holster. And you notice I did that in a very floppy position. I wasn't, I didn't have anything holding the gun in place or the holster in place. When it's on your belt, it's gonna be a little bit more retained. But this design, you could use this for appendix, and it, but it's starting to get a little bit bigger, and you're gonna to start to run out of room in that location to do it. So a holster of this design is going to be very comfortable if you put it in a good location, but now you're looking at the side of your body of you know, the three to five o'clock position, and you're also looking at your back. These are the more of the locations that are, this type of holster is gonna be best for. And again, I guarantee you somebody will find a way to put this in an appendix carry position, and depending on the design of your body, that may work well. But it's not going to be quite as good. The leather is also tends to be nicer up against your body than the Kydex does. It will kind of, it just feels better up against your body than hard plastic. These tend to be more comfortable in the long haul as you carry them with the way they, they work. And you'll see that all of the rivets are very smooth headed and recessed. So as I run my finger across them, I'm not feeling this sticking up, it's, it's down. So as I go across, I have to actually put my finger across the center of it to touch it. Otherwise I stay on the holster on the leather. That's good because you don't want these three things sticking up against you. 
So having them recessed and well constructed is an important feature. So when you're when you're vetting this type of holster, look for little features like that, really rounded, recessed and smooth rivets or whether they use screws. Some of them will use screws so you have adjustable tension. You want to make sure the the head that's on the side that's going to touch your body is very smooth and well recessed. And of course you do have adjustable cant and adjustable ride height just like the other this basically is very similar to the Kydex shell of the other one, the, the upper half of it. And these are very, very comfortable in a longer duration than a solid Kydex. And by the way, the way you would perform those adjustments, the cant adjustment kind of stands out, it's kind of very visible. You'd loosen this screw and tilt it back and forth or along that slot. But you can also move this along the length of the holster. There are a couple positions you can move it in. So there's your adjustability. It, you can also get different clips from them. So there's different accessory clips that basically the clip is longer or shorter. And there's also different varieties of clips. And that's another important thing to look for. This may be exactly the holster you want, just like you see it. It may work perfect for you. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe you need a shorter clip. Maybe you like a different style clip. Look for manufacturers that have at least enough diversity to get you what you want. Don't settle for a holster that either is too short, too long, wrong clip, or overall wrong design. Make sure you, the, the manufacturer offers enough diversity to get you what you want. And the Inventor does. They've got a huge diversity of clips and other accessories and ways you can order it. So it's also a lot of this can be selected when you're ordering it so that you don't have to buy it and then buy other things to change it, pay for stuff that you don't want. As you start moving into these other holsters, you can start to get a accommodation for lights and red dots. Make sure that when you're ordering the holster, if you've got a red dot on it, that the manufacturer has an option to choose. Vetters does, they have pull downs. You can pull down and say, you know, this is the gun I've got and this is the red dot or light I've got. Now, lights can be a little more of a problem with holsters because they tend to go down here and they tend to interfere with the trigger guard and stuff like that. So lights are harder for a Kydex holster manufacturer to accommodate. But red dots, which are becoming quite common these days, they can accommodate. Now this one would would accommodate a lot of the MOS red dots as long as they were the smaller ones, but they have you can pull from the pull down and they'll kind of notch this back. So you're more likely to get red dot support on a Kydex holster than light support, but don't buy the holster and then hope your thing's going to fit. Make sure that you select the right pull down and the manufacturer that you're choosing doesn't give you the options. They might not be the right holster for you. And I did notice with the vetters, they have a wide diversity of options for the common, at least especially red dots that tend to be put on holsters these days. So this is probably the most comfortable of the most versatile holsters. Go back to this one here is very versatile because it's a lot smaller. It'll go just about anywhere on your body. Little less comfortable, even though it still is a comfortable holster, but that leather backing kind of improves that. So this time I've got the Comfort Tuck holster stuffed away somewhere. Or do I? Well, actually I do. Right there. Now you might choose to reverse the hand, put a left hand holster back there if you're a righty, which would put the grip more in this position instead of backwards. And that's a position even though this holster does hold open and you can reholster without taking it off. Never reholster a gun that you can't see. So for if I have it back there, I would have to bring the holster around. So let's move up to the least versatile style of holster that's also the most comfortable. And that is these full size, which this particular one is called their Comfort Tuck. And that's really what it is. It's a very comfortable holster. It has a sweat guard that comes all the way up, keeps the gun, any part of the gun from touching your body. So it's all leather. All the rivets are recessed. You can see here's a number of adjustabilities for ride height. And you can turn these to adjust the cant. And you can also play around with a combination of adjusting the height as well as the tilt to get the height and cant combination that is exactly what you want to do. On this particular one, you would do it with the clips rather than rotating the shell. The shell is fixed in place. Why do I say this is the least versatile? Well, it's because it's big. So the two places this is going to work very well is on your back or on the side of your body. And on the side of your body, a holster like this is very comfortable because you don't have anything pressing really directly against the gun. Your belt will come across it. 
but you don't have clips on here that are kind of pushing it even further in. The clips are out here and the holster will tend to bend and contour your body so you get a very wraparound effect and it puts the the pressure of this thing mounted to your body on a larger area. I'm not going to say you can't do a Penix carry with this because as soon as I do somebody's going to say hey I do it and I've done it for 20 years with a holster just like that and you can but now we're getting a little more difficult you got to have the right body type the right gun the right holster and the willingness to put up with some things poking in places that most people don't want things poking and the fact that when you sit down your body your body bends forward and is going to pinch into it versus when you sit down with a gun on the side the only thing that happens is this approaches the chair or whatever object you're sitting on so yes it's possible to appendix carry with a holster like this but you're going to find it more difficult so when you move up to a holster like this really what you're looking for is a wider section of your body and distributing the load across the wider section of your body. Now these holsters, this is cowhide leather, and I did fail to mention on this one here that this is cowhide leather as well, and they're just two different colors. Now, Vetters does offer horsehide for some of their holsters, and horsehide has some advantages, and some durability advantages, but either one will work, and they also offer some diversity in colors, the tan versus the black of the leather itself and of course a color diversity in the shells that's kind of nice if that's something that's important to you so at this point i have the comfort tuck which is the largest holster and i have it in the typical place you would put it which would be on your strong side that's probably one of the most easy ways to carry probably one of the more common ways to carry and you notice it doesn't show even when i lift up because i have a shirt that's long enough to cover it but when it gets down to business i have ready access to it it's also easier to reholster because I can clearly see as I'm lining up the gun to reholster it. And then two other considerations to think about. Tuckable. All of the clips on these are tuckable. They're designed to allow for you to tuck your shirt behind it. And it's got a little bit of a pad on it that's kind of meant to hold onto the fabric. It's not Velcro in that it's going to snag the fabric. Let's see if I can turn it where you can see it. You can see it. It's, it's like the soft side of Velcro, not the grippy side, but the, the fabric side of Velcro. See if I can get the camera to focus. So what's the importance of that? Why does that matter? Well, when you're carrying inside the waistband, if you tuck your shirt in the way you would normally tuck your shirt into your pants, then this is all going to be visible. So what you'll do is you'll leave your shirt untucked and it'll hang down. Well, that can, depending on the circumstances where you're going and what you're doing, that can look a little bit on the slovenly side, may not be something you can do. What you can do with this is you can tuck the tail of the shirt in here and then just kind of let the shirt hang down over the gun and hide it so that it looks neat and hides the gun but doesn't have the shirt just constantly coming back out so that one that with the tension of the holster up against your body your shirt tucked in it that little bit of soft fabric which is not going to pull or pill or tear your shirt will allow you to look good but also still have that gun well hidden without having your shirt just hanging out and depending on the circumstance, let's say if you were going to something business casual or things like that, having your shirt just out may not be an acceptable option. So the tuckability gives you that. So if those are circumstances you need to work with, then you would look for that tuckable feature. And the last thing I'll look at is price. Prices on holsters can go from cheap ones you find on Amazon that you truly do get what you pay for on up to 100 plus for a simple holster like the one you're looking at. Vetter's holsters are priced well. So the pocket holsters start around 50 bucks and, and can go up a little bit depending on what options you choose from the pull downs. The leather ones start at $69.99 and go up depending again what options you choose. And the Kydex ones start at $65 or $64.99. So these are very reasonably priced holsters for very high quality that'll get you what you want. So kind of be careful. The really cheap ones you see, and we've bought a number of cheap holsters, buy them on Amazon, buy them at gun shows, and in the end you get what you pay for. They either don't work well, they don't hold the gun well, or they fall apart. And we've also, in a couple of cases, probably wildly overpaid for holsters and gotten no better quality than, than these. So you're really getting a good quality at a good price point. So hopefully the video was helpful in kind of giving you an idea of what to look for in a holster, what to do, you know, your various options and what type of holster is going to work best for a particular option. And thank you to Vetter for providing these holsters to make this video a possibility. 
And if you like our videos, please give us a thumbs up, share, subscribe. Check us out on Facebook, Patreon, Instagram, Twitter, Getter. We're kind of everywhere. And thank you.